Good afternoon from Mountain Patriot Homestead. Grab your favorite warm beverage, sit down, and let's talk for a spell. Well, I had to come home and grab me a cup of coffee. That's not unusual, but what was unusual is when I pull into the driveway, get out of the truck, and had this little pepper snow coming down when it wasn't even supposed to be doing anything today. I think a week ago they had said, oh, we may have some snow showers on Monday, but then they'd taken it out days ago. But now I get home and it's nothing to be concerned about, but there is apparently moisture in the air and the air is cold. So we have a little bit of pepper snow coming down. The ponds froze over, so we have like these little white specks out there on it. Um, just enough to remind us that, yeah, it's uh, right, what, two days before winter? And so here we are. And not only is it two days before winter, but we're just a few days before Christmas. And something that this time of year I start hearing about is... Oh, commercialized Christmas, uh, consumerism, all anybody cares about, spending money. Well, you, uh, you, if you've drove past any of the stores in the last few days, I say the last few days, since before Thanksgiving, I can believe people are spending money because the parking lots are full. If they're not spending money, they're doing a whole lot of window shopping, and I, I guess me not being a real shopping type person, I, I just don't get it, but you know, if that's what people want to do, more power to them. Go for it. Um, but yes, parking lots are full of folks right now. I keep hearing that people aren't spending as much money this year. Well, they may not be, but they're doing something in the store. I don't know what it is, but they're doing something. But even if everybody was going in and spending every penny they've got, um, whose business is that of anybody else's? Well, I guess we should all be concerned if, if uh, we're spending the money that we don't have and everybody else is spending the money that they don't have. and um, Because... You know, at some point in time, we've got to pay it back, right? But when people, I don't even like the holidays because it's so commercialized. Who's responsible for commercializing Christmas? Is it the stores? Is it uh, these people that do studies that learn how to key in on our sense of consumerism what do they know what the magic potion that makes us want to run out and spend money who has the power to spend it or don't spend it I've got that answer look in this mirror look in the mirror if I look in the mirror that's the person that has the power of whether any holiday is commercialized. This person right here. If I don't want to spend the money, nobody's making me spend the money. I choose what I want to spend. Now, I know we love to make our loved ones happy. Uh, sometimes we buy things for others because we feel obligated. Uh, well, they gave me a gift. I've got to give them a gift. Is that true? Or maybe they just gave you a gift to be thanking you for, I don't know, just being you. Or maybe some help that you've given them throughout the year. Or maybe they felt like they were obligated and they had to give you something because maybe you gave them something last year. Regardless of the reasons that we give gifts to people, whether it's loved ones, whether it's, I don't know, people that you barely know, who's responsible 
for just drawing the line, this person right here. Not me for all of you, but each person is responsible of saying yes or no as to what they're giving each year. So sometimes, I, I had an employer one time that when Christmas would roll around, and she's such a sweet person, such a sweet person. Some people don't realize that about her uh, because she has to have this tough persona about her. But she's so kind and would give you the shirt off her back if she likes you. I mean, just the sweetest person. But I know there was one Christmas that she was just, oh, I'm having to spend all this money, and I don't know if people even like the gifts I'm giving them. And it's like, well, who all are you giving gifts to? Because, you know, me, I don't give gifts to everybody just to give a gift. And, and so I asked, well, who are you giving them to? And she started naming off these people that she didn't know that well. She just maybe had some business acquaintance with, but she felt like she was obligated because she had been doing it for years that people expecting it was were expecting it. And it's like, why do you give it to them? Well, because I always have. Well, what would happen if you didn't? Well, she didn't really have an answer for that. Because is the world going to come to an end if you don't give somebody you barely know a gift? No. As a matter of fact, stop. Just stop and think here for just a second. If you're hearing little ticking sounds here, my, my pepper's walking around in here with their toenails needing cutting, but anyway. Um, just stop and think for a second. What is a gift that you remember from a year ago that someone gave you? Can you remember one gift that you received last year? Now, if somebody gave you a car, you probably remember that, um, maybe. <laughs> but think of just Christmas gifts you received last Christmas. Can you remember one gift? Can you remember two? Can you remember more than two? <laughs> See the little head back there? She decided to go get on the couch and take a nap. Can you remember all the gifts that you're given for a holiday, for your birthday? But especially at Christmas time, because we worry so much about what gifts that we give others. Now, should our gifts be thoughtful ones? Yes, they should be. We should think out, if, we're, if we care enough about someone to give them a gift, we should make sure that it's a gift that they're going to appreciate. Because just going and grabbing, we, me and a coworker were laughing the other day about uh, people that wait until the last minute and grab something at a, you know, convenience store, you know, some gas station or something on the corner because they've got to give something. If you're not putting thought into it, maybe you really don't know what the person likes. Well, if you don't know what the person likes, is that someone that you really need to give a gift to? I'm not saying be a Scrooge and not give any gifts. I'm just saying... Do we worry ourselves a lot of times about gifts that the person's not even going to remember by the next Christmas or the next birthday? Let me give you some examples of some gifts. <laughs> some, one was from long, long ago. It was a gift my grandma made my daddy. Now, I've kept these through the years. I keep them put up. But my grandma made little booties for everybody for Christmas, birthdays. But she made this little pair of booties for my daddy. 
and even put his initials here on them. And she gave those to my daddy, and my daddy wore them. Uh, you tell he wasn't real tough on them, but he wore them. And But they're just so well made that they lasted through him. And then when my daddy passed, I got them, and I've kept them put up, of course. But those were something that my grandma made for my daddy years ago. Those are probably probably from the late 70s. <laughs> They're probably older than a lot of the people watching this video. But these, these booties were probably from the late 70s, if not even before, because I can't remember exactly when they were. But she gave those to my daddy, and that was something that he treasured because his mama made those. Now, of course, I treasure them because it was something that my grandma touched and my daddy wore. And so it's something that means a lot to me. So when these were given to me, it's a very precious gift. Same thing with the family Bible. I've got family Bible from my great grandparents. So that was from the mid 1800s. So again, a gift that means quite a bit to me, sentimental gifts. Um, so that is a well thought out gift. Um, a gift from work that I got just the other day. Of course, I love my coffee. This is hot chocolate mix. Guess what I do with the hot chocolate mix? I put it in my coffee. So it all works out. But a simple gift that I, you can tell I've been using it pretty good because I just got it the other day. Um, but just simple gifts that it was exchanged at the office. It was, um, what is it, what do they call it? Dirty Santa or whatever we played. But a gift that somebody touched that they had to put thought into that they didn't just run to the store and throw money at it and spend money on it. And not only that, I'm a canner, so... You know, got me another mason jar going on. So, another gift that, to me, means something. Um, because anything that people touch and put thought into doing means more to me than just something that you've run out and threw money at. And uh, they may like it, they may not, but it's something. Um Speaking of throwing money at stuff, something, my husband knows that I'm weird. I know that y'all have figured this out. It didn't probably take you very long, but I guess I'm strange when it comes to spending money. Uh, I will spend money on other people before I spend it on myself. It's just the way I was raised. Uh, a lot of my mom and daddy in me, I guess, because they were the same way. And I just, I don't spend a lot of money on me. Uh, it's not because, oh, I want you to feel so bad and I want to be a martyr. No, that's not it. It's just everything I start to spend money on, especially if it's for me, I, my first thought is, how many hours do I have to work to pay for this? Um, it's just, I guess that's some little weird quirk about me. But uh, when it comes down to buying things for myself, uh, stuff pretty much has to be falling apart before I'll buy something, else, especially clothing items. Um, now, that may sound kind of ratty, but, uh, you know, especially if it's for stuff around the farm. Well, I'm not even going to show you my poor old muck boots. And if you don't know what a muck boot is, it's like rubber boots um, that you wear around the farm when you're doing work or, you know, whatever to protect your feet, keep them from getting wet. Uh, they're the right type that keeps them from getting as cold and we just we wear me I wear muck boots all year round my husband laughs at me because I'll wear them I don't care it can be July and August and I've got them boogers on it because they protect my feet well my last pair of muck boots I've had them things probably I don't know 10 years maybe I mean they're they're pitiful. <laughs> they 
They're very pitiful. Um, the the cloth is about wore off on them. Um, the of the uppers, um, the the rubber portion of them have so many cracks in them that I could walk through the yard in the dew and my feet get wet. I mean, they were doing nothing. I may as well have been barefooted, but I just refused to go buy me another pair. Um, I, I'm just weird that way because it's like, that's how much I am not spending, you know, and I just wouldn't spend that money. Well, my romantic husband the other day, he told me, he said, I've got a gift coming for, for you, and when it gets here, uh, you're not going to know what it is because, you know, you're going to see the package when it gets here. And sure enough, I got here the other day, I come home, and this was sitting on my front porch. Well, I knew he hadn't just got him another pair of muck boots because he'd got some here on the back. And sure enough, he'd got me a new pair of muck boots. And they're nice. My feet's dry. <laughs> my feet's warm. I don't, I can walk across the yard and, you know, my feet's not, you know, getting wet and nasty. So, even though he spent money on that um, and he didn't make them himself, I appreciate that. That was very thoughtful of him. Uh, he could have just grumbled and mumbled about crazy woman won't go buy her any boots. I guess she'll just have wet feet. No, he just took it upon himself to, to get them himself because he knew I probably'd wear them things till they fell off my feet. Um, so it was a gift that he put thought in, and I appreciate that. And I do appreciate my dry feet. Um, so, you know, gifts... Gifts don't have to be things. They don't, they don't have to be diamond rings. And they don't have to be, you know, fancy cars or whatever people spend a lot of money on that they think that they they if they don't spend a lot of money, then it must have not been something of value. And that's not true. And that's, that's not true at all. I guess now, if you're the type of person that that's what you want, diamond rings and Ferraris, then that's all you want. And that's what, you know, if somebody don't get you that, you're not going to be happy. But on the other hand, if you appreciate things that are heartfelt, that the person giving those to you obviously put thought into, then you're going to appreciate those type of gifts, the ones that are given to you out of love and out of caring. Um, I know it's different when you're giving for children. Uh, believe me, uh, it's hard to tell, but once upon a time, I was a kid. Uh, that was back in the day where we had Sears Roebuck catalogs that arrived, I don't know, those things probably got there way earlier than the parents wanted them to get there, but probably got uh, arrived, Y'all, some of y'all may know, around October or so because I wanted to give parents plenty of time to order whatever they needed out of the wish book because the Sears and Roebuck catalog wish book was like a toy store in a catalog and I know nowadays you can get online and you can find everything but that was our our online then that was the closest thing to online we had was you know a catalog and we would wear the catalogs out, all of us. You know, if you were a kid and there was a wish book around, you wore the pages out. Now, I was the type of kid, I didn't ask for a bunch of stuff when I was a kid. Uh, I think I was aware at a pretty early age that we weren't rich. I didn't think that we were just church mice poor, but I also realized that we, I don't really don't know how to word it, but I think at a very early age, I, I realized that we didn't have just a lot of material wealth. We were never hungry. We weren't dirty. We weren't uh, unkempt. Mama would have, you know, it would have been hard to her if we went somewhere looking like ragamuffins. So, you know, we had clothes. We were clean. We were fed. Uh, there was nothing like that going on uh, to the contrary but when it came to just things uh, just stuff uh, we didn't have a lot of things that 
super unneeded, I guess. We, we had all the necessities. Now, at Christmas, Mama and Daddy, bless their hearts, Mama more than Daddy, I think, Mama would do everything she could that if there was something in particular that we wanted, she tried her best to get it for us. But me or my sister, neither one, were real big on asking for a lot of stuff. I think we were taught early on to not be greedy. I think that was the biggest thing. We were just taught to not be greedy. And so we might ask Santa for something. Uh, I know our letters went something to the effect, Dear Santa, I've been very good this year. Of course, what kid's going to say, I've been a little pooped all year? No, they're going to say, I've been very good all year. I hope you're doing well. I hope Mrs. Claus is good. I hope you've had plenty of good, you know, that sort of thing. Butter Santa Claus up. And then you would ask for a thing. Now, I remember the only thing that I can remember specifically asking for as a kid, I'm sure every Christmas I ask for something, but one Christmas I specifically asked, it was, um, I think I was about four, so it was the late 60s, I asked for a robot. Now, mind you, in the late 60s, you know, 69, 70 robots and that sort of thing, like lost in space and all that, that was all big stuff. So there was this little robot that was supposed to, he, you know, the commercials, be back to the commercialism, little robot would walk around, you know, in the commercials and all. And seemed like, uh, you know, they advertised he could go up walls and he could do this and he could do that. Well, of course, I wanted one. Now, I, I've never been a big doll type person. I've never really wanted dolls, but I wanted that robot. And I, you know, I want a robot, please. Can I have a Santa Claus? Can I please have a robot? Well, I got that robot for Christmas. And like I said, that's the only gift I can ever remember really wanting for Christmas, other than a pony or something. You know, kids always want ponies or something, elephants or, you know, whatever. Um, but I really wanted that robot. And I got that robot, and I don't think that robot... If that robot lasted a week, I'm surprised because I, it seems like it broke in no time. It wouldn't climb the walls like the commercials showed. It, it didn't do all these special things that that robot on TV did. And so I was very disappointed. And um, that, like I said, that is the only gift that I can remember really wanting for Christmas. I, I know as the years went on, you know, I remember when there was the Cabbage Patch craze and Tickle, tickle Me Elmo and all this as, as my kids were growing up and things. There was all different types of things that, you know, really every kid wanted this stuff. Uh, but that's really, that robot's the only thing I can really think of that I really wanted and then was so disappointed. And so I think I learned real quick that things aren't as they actually seem, you know, to be on TV, because <laughs> on TV things can do magic stuff that when you get them home, they don't really do. So even as a, when you're, when you're dealing with children and gifting them, there's just, a few things to remember. Sometimes kids are going to ask for things that are beyond their age bracket. No matter how smart your kid is, um, you know, there may be things that they're wanting that's just far beyond their, their age. Um, if kids get too much, are they going to be thankful? We've all seen that kid that they could be surrounded by Toys R Us and they would tear into one gift, see the box, throw it down, tear into another, see the box, throw it down and not play with anything. And then when they were all done, where, is there more? Where, what else? And then in the end, they're crying, they're disappointed because they're overstimulated. They got more than their brain and everything can handle and do we really change as adults is there much is there much past 
adulthood that we change? Do we change much? No. Because I think sometimes we get more or expect more or we're expected to give more until we're just so overwhelmed and then we blame it on commercialism. When the fact is, is there's one person, one person, that person in the mirror that has control over how commercialized the holiday is. And that's you. And that's me. Speaking to myself. Because I have to realize that I can't do everything for everybody. As much as I would love to just be able to be that person that just goes out and hands out $100 bills and buys people's meals and, you know, gives a family everything they want. I wish I could be that person. I really do. Can you imagine the smiles you could bring to people? But I know I can't. And I know that I have to take care of those that I love and that love me. So, again, there's only one person that controls how commercialized Christmas is. And that's the person you see when you look in the mirror every day. I don't know what your beliefs about Christmas are. Some of you may not celebrate Christmas at all. Some of you may look at Christmas as just a reason to give gifts and get gifts. Me, I'm a Christian, so I believe that the Christmas holiday is to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. I know before everybody sends me a message going, well, you know that December 25th is really not Jesus' birthday. I know that. I know. But it's the day we recognize, just like, you know, the presidents of the United States that we celebrate their birthdays. Their birthday doesn't fall on Monday every year. You know that, right? Okay. Well, I know that Jesus' birthday is not December 25th. However, that's the day that it's recognized, and that's the day I recognize it. And I realize that the ultimate gift, one that I cannot surpass, no matter how generous I am, is the gift of that child's birth in a manger so long ago. Now, that's my beliefs. Um, again, you may not believe in that, and that's entirely up to you. But regardless of how you feel about the holidays, whatever your beliefs are about Christmas, and um, if, maybe you think it's too commercialized. If you do, please let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have a special way of celebrating, whether it's with gifts, without gifts, let me know. You know, I, I, I enjoy knowing what other people do and how they celebrate and traditions and all of that sort of thing. So share those with, with me and all the rest of us. If you've watched this video to this point, I love you. Thank you. Thank you for just sticking in here. I know I ramble. Uh, that's just the way I talk. I can talk about the weather for 10 minutes. So I do appreciate you hanging in there with me. Uh, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, I would please ask you to do so. That way, uh, just hit the notifications that, and you know, hopefully YouTube will let you know every time I put up a new video. Uh, as you can tell, looking back through my videos, I do a variety of different things. Uh, some days it may just be introducing you to the critters here on the homestead. Uh, otherwise, it uh, could be cooking, it could be just sitting and visiting. Uh, but if you would, if you would subscribe to this channel, if you like this video, please click that thumbs up button. Uh, let me know that you like it. Uh, comment, as I said. Share with your friends if you think this is something worth sharing. And just let me know if you like what I'm doing here. I'm going to go for now. Uh, I hope to have another video out by Christmas. If I'm not, if I don't, if something comes up, and you know how busy it is around here. We're, we're really busy right now because I don't know if, if y'all are about to get this 
polar vortex or whatever they're calling it. I, I'm calling it the North Pole relocation uh, is what it looks like here. It's, we're going to have the minus nose coming in. Uh, so I think it's like supposed to be around minus nine Friday morning with a wind chill of between minus 35 and minus 40. That's just no. But uh, if I'm able to get back and make another video, I'll try to do it one before Christmas. If I, for some reason I don't, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and tell you I love you and thank you for joining us here at Mountain Patriot Homestead. Have a great afternoon.